All right, uh, just gonna make sure we're all muted. Cool, if anybody needs to unmute, they can, I don't know why. The next meeting people are jumping into the room, but okay. Uh, all right, let's jump in. Uh, so hopefully you can see my screen. Just gonna run through the markets really fast here uh, this morning. So you can see we gapped up a little bit this morning and then selling back off. Uh, didn't think uh, any open upside might, uh, might last long, but we'll see what happens. I still think we're going lower on the day, which is not the worst thing in the world. Uh, again, are we gonna crash? Highly doubtful. Uh, Fed is pumping tons of money into the market, and I don't think there's any gigantic crash happening, but can we get a 5-10% pullback at some point? Absolutely. Would that be good? Absolutely. Uh, I want to have uh, a lot of uh, room. A lot of cash just sitting all there. Yeah, it's all transitory. Absolutely. As long as my money is not transitory, uh, and we're making some... I'm sure in the room there. Right, so I'm going to mute folks so just make sure you're muted uh, when you jump in uh, all right so futures up slightly on the day but only slightly not even you know much to talk about uh, here on es so uh, yeah Igor I'll uh, I'll do that as well while we're talking all right so we'll keep letting people in and give me one more second here we'll make uh, Igor the co-host as well. Perfect. Uh, all right. And then uh, Gabe also, uh, you are co-host, uh, just in case need be. All right. So uh, markets are up uh, this morning, but just fractionally, it's just a nothing sideways open so far. Uh, futures are up 0.06%. NASDAQ futures up. Uh, I don't know what's driving this because half of the, you know, the big, big stocks are all down, uh, but NASDAQ up a teeny bit, just trying to hold on to that eight uh, EMA as well. And the Russell actually trying to completely not crater um, here. So, you know, rut sucks and it's proven that for the last couple of weeks. Uh, however, might be an interesting point in, uh, in, uh, in Russell to start to nibble in there. So I know Igor, I think, is back in with a, uh, a tiered fly. So that's, uh, I think, a good opportunity here. So I think Russell's sitting in a, in a good spot. Take a quick look at just some of the underlying uh, factors as well here. So VIX down uh, just a tad today. It's just hovering in this whole 16, 17 range. Uh, it's really just where it's been. You know, we've broken out a little bit. Uh, as you go here, but uh, not much going on uh, on the VIX. Still super low, which means, uh, and it's funny, I was listening to, and this is how sad my life might be, but I'm watching like CNBC, like the European <laughs> section last night, uh, like seven o'clock or something last night, I actually be listening to it in the car and they had a chartist on and this guy sounded pretty good. I uh, seemed to really know what he was talking about, but it was really referring to the VIX is it's not a fear gauge. It doesn't judge fear. It just judges, you know, again, it's, it's a volatility. Um, and how, how quickly are we to have big swings? And right now you're looking at really small movements in the market up or down. So are we going to crash down 10%? I mean, it could happen, but your VIX is just so doggone low that there aren't really pretty big moves. And Don Kaufman pointed this out yesterday as well. Let me just jump into the NASDAQ. Look back here at some of these NASDAQ moves back from like February and so forth. You saw NASDAQ in a day. I mean, these are 250 point wide, but the NASDAQ's up at 1500 now. So what's a one point move? I'm sorry, 15,000. So a one point move now is $150 day. Uh, and these are 250 wide bars. Uh, so that's a 1% move is not quite a full bar. Uh, but you can see that we were, you know, there were days when we were moving a full 250 or more points in a day uh, on the NASDAQ. But look at everything since really the end of, of May, 
these are really tiny, tiny moves in the NASDAQ. I mean, very small moves. Uh, so NASDAQ is not moving more than maybe a half a percent a day at most, maybe not even that, because uh, 1% is 150 bucks um, on it. So you got some days where NASDAQ's not even moving uh, anywhere close to that. So really tiny moves. And the VIX is telling you that movement is really, really small because volatility is really, really low. Look at these little tiny moves too. So everybody, I mean, you would think the world that was ending on uh, some of the things uh, when, when you look at some of the posts from people and, oh my gosh, the, you know, NASDAQ's down, you know, 50 points today and the world's crashing and ending. My stock is dying. Uh, well, the indexes aren't moving that much. So I don't want to spend that much time on it today, but uh, it's really interesting to note how small of a moves you're getting daily uh, on the indexes right now. And that VIX hanging out down there uh, really, really low doesn't seem to indicate much of anything um, is going to happen. Uh, here's the uh, bonds uh, real quick. Bonds continue their nice little uptrend march. Uh, here. I'm not even worried about this downtrend anymore, uh, mostly this uptrend. Uh, so bonds are just continuing to want to move higher. Uh, so steady march up, pull back, bounce, pull back, bounce, pull back, bounce, just keeps hitting off of this 21 EMA perfectly and you know, off a little bit today, but we're really off the lows pretty well. So bonds are up, which would mean obviously TLT is up which makes it a, a pretty good trade um, as well right now. And then you've got interest rates and you would you know, think the interest rates are going down because they are, because bonds are going up. And when interest rates go down, big tech and tech as a whole goes up. So a little inverse relationship there. So as bonds climb, tech climbs. And that's really what we've been seeing. Uh, so interest rates continue to dive. Um, however, uh, the NASDAQ is up just barely today, but let's take a look at some of these charts. I'm going to jump off of uh, this and let's head to, uh, to just a little bit of different chart here. Um, as you look at uh, Facebook, you've got a PSR reversal up here. So it's reversing itself on the daily, and that's not a really great looking sign uh, for Facebook. I mean, it doesn't mean it's cratering and crashing, but you were given the signal back here to get out. Uh, so stochastic momentum told you get out. This is where I would have, as soon as it breaks that 40 and it looks like it's heading down, it's a good day to get out and we'd have been out uh, or short. Uh, Amazon, same thing. It told you here, get out. Um, and it's been dropping as well. And when that PSR dot, which is the parabolic, uh, reversal here when that dot gets really close to the actual candle itself like it is today you can bet that the next day is most likely going to be a reversal to the other side so while this was an upside reversal here see that it kept getting closer and closer and then boom reversed um, you know down 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 oh got right to the top of the candle reversed now we go up until we get close to the candle you know, and the farther we are from the candle, the better that trend's going to hang in there. Uh, so we're right smacking it today uh, here on Amazon. Things don't look good for Amazon uh, right now. Again, is Amazon going to crater? I don't think so. Um, but the 21 here could be certainly a target, uh, which would be another, what, 40 points or so on Amazon. Uh, Tesla, uh, same type of a thing. Here, things looked really good on this reversal. Uh, for Tesla, but it just can't seem to get any momentum uh, going. This uh, uh, little resistance area here really held in uh, pretty good. It's tried a couple times, failed, tried again, failed. Uh, so who knows where Tesla's heading to. Uh, Microsoft, one of the only big eight of the NASDAQ uh, that's actually up today, and this thing just continues to crank uh, and move to new highs. Um, on Microsoft, still in the overbought area, but it looks good and uh, gives you an idea of where, where things are. On the NASDAQ, Apple also up just a fraction right now uh, after hitting a new high um, 
yesterday, our new at least recent high yesterday still looks good uh, on that. So uh, Apple and Microsoft, kind of the opposite, everything else selling off a bit. This was a good signal, get out here. It did rally up. Um, we could be really close to a reversal uh, signal on Netflix. And then Google really thought this was uh, gonna make a little bit of a run. Uh, it's not your average tech stock. They are not reliant on people delivering products by truck, by transports. Um, it's not super, uh, you, know, you know, tied to all of those potential issues. If things happen with COVID, looks like that's getting worse, which may be driving things down. Well, Google's not really affected by that because if there's no truck drivers, it doesn't matter to Google. They're not delivering products like um, Apple might be and Microsoft might be and Tesla might be um, and Amazon might be. Uh, you know, so Facebook, Google, and then obviously Netflix and NVIDIA uh, as well. So, you know, NVIDIA is definitely affected because you've got to ship the chips uh, somewhere. And this is definitely here, told you get the heck out. It reversed here, stochastic momentum went and it's, uh, it's coming back down uh, on Netflix. Is it crashing? No, but it's definitely broken that 21. So where can we look to find some support? Uh, not really good support levels on this thing. Uh, you might be able to throw the FIB numbers up here and get uh, some better idea, but uh, NASDAQ could have a, a ways to drop um, depending on where we, where we look. If we look at, yeah, I don't wanna look at these charts. Um, so if we're looking in here on it, I mean, maybe there's some support in here. Uh, the 50 might really become a, a good support level. I think in here, this might be uh, a good support level. So somewhere down around 710, 700 uh, on uh, NVIDIA. You guys can play with fibs on that. Uh, all right, we're 13 minutes in and I wanna get, keep rolling quickly. Things, so I wanna get to some trades. Um, as well, markets have definitely gone negative now. Uh, a whole six dollars on SPX uh, for a 0.14 percent probably feels like the world is ending to to many people right now uh, because we're down a half a not even a half a percent. Uh, all right, so let's jump into some different trades. So there's where the overall market and some of the techs uh, seem to be right now. A little bit of the underlyings, uh, bonds down, yields up tech down, big tech pretty much down, except for Apple and Microsoft. Uh, if we wanna look at some individual stocks, we have some time later, we can, but I wanna get into some of the newer trades um, that we're playing with right now. And uh, we're gonna start with the 111 trade and I'm gonna switch gears here and I'm going to share Tastyworks account which is a little bit easier to deal with uh, on some of these. Uh, so let's take a look at a uh, at Tastyworks here and let's look at, let's clear it off. And let's look at what a 111 trade is. So a 111 trade, uh, let's just jump in and, and uh, we'll, we'll explain it to you. We're gonna go out 45 days on this one. So we're gonna, we're gonna start with SPY and we're gonna take a look at what the difference between SPY and doing something like the MES um, may be doing the 111 trade. And I know you've seen um, Dennis or Captain Jones doing these trades as well. And I think he and I really love this type of trade. Um, so it's a pretty nice little trade. I kind of like it in SPY better. I think we both agree um, on that. So I, I, think, uh, I think watching these things in SPY uh, is really pretty good. Uh, Just making sure uh, we've got everybody in. Uh, so I like SPY because I don't mind getting a signed SPY. And I really don't mind getting a signed SPY at 10% below today's price. Um, I love owning it and don't mind it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go out 45 days. We're gonna start with something around the 25. I'm actually gonna start with the 30 Delta. So I'm gonna start with putting on a 30 Delta and we're gonna do a five wide here. Uh, so which would be if you're doing this in MES, where would be 50 wide, but we're gonna put on a five wide 
Uh, and Dennis, you may have uh, some, some individual takes as well uh, on tweaking this thing. But I'm going to look at a five wide put spread that I'm going to buy. But I want to buy that for about $1. So we're going to move the strikes until we can get to about $1. So there we go. Uh, so we're going to look at buying the 426. We're going to sell the 421 put spread. Uh, so there's a five wide put spread. And uh, that's going to give us uh, you know, a nice negative delta here. We're going to have to pay a buck uh, to do this. Not going to take up a ton of buying power yet. But we're going to finance this by selling a put for $2 to give us a credit. So we're going to go all the way down, find something selling for right around 2 bucks, And that's going to give us a credit um, of $2. So now we've got a $1 credit. We want to put this on for roughly a dollar credit. Um, here, if we were doing this in MES or uh, one of the or SPX itself, then I would be looking for a ten dollar credit. We'll 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 look at the differences between that. So let's take a look at this. So it's a one one one. So I I, I sold this naked way down here at that's eighty four eighty seven percent out of the money uh, right now three ninety six. Uh, so what's three ninety six? Uh, we're at 434 today. That's 38 points down from 434, uh, which is roughly a 9% drop. So if the market drops 9%, then this thing's going to start to uh, be in trouble. And let's and we're going to be using on this particular trade on SPY. It's about a $5,000 buying power, which is why SPY is a little bit more expensive for some of you um, than others. Uh, but I like it for a couple of reasons, and I'll show you that. So let's take a look at how this thing really plays out. Uh, if we take a look at it, let's get rid of all of these other things. Does anyone have to move this thing to get the expirations to show up? It's really irritating um, on Tastyworks. There's all plenty of irritating things on Tastyworks uh, and their charting. So here's what it looks like. And for those of you that have been in uh, not only Income Navigator, but Daily Nut for quite a while, you know that we also did a lot of what we call the bear trap trade. Um, and yeah, one doesn't have that problem. You are correct. Um, so I, maybe I'll, I'll have to switch to, to, to showing that in the future, which is a much better tool anyway than this piece of junk that Tastyworks calls an analyze tab. Uh, anyway, uh, but it's nice and visual and pretty to show for training purposes. Uh, so you can see on this SPY, Anything to the upside here is a $99 or probably a $100 um, gain. So we can, uh, we're going to move up. Uh, if we stay the same, move up, we're going to make 100 bucks on our basically $5,000 trade. Not the greatest return. Uh, it's a 2% return in 45 days. 2% uh, return in 45 days. Again, not, not the worst thing in the world. Uh, you know, a 2% return in 45 days uh, is essentially a 16% annualized return. So if you did this every 45 days, you'd at least make 16% a year on this. But the magic really happens if we start to leak down into here into what oh. we consider the bear trap on our bear trap trades. So inside the trap here, well, now the profit goes to 600 bucks because essentially you've got a five wide uh, here, so as soon as we get inside the spread, we get a five wide profit plus the dollar credit that we took in. So we're going to make 600 bucks. Now making $600 on a $5,000 trade is 12%. Uh, so you figure 12% um, over 45 days uh, is roughly 97% annualized. So if it, if it consistently went into the trap, life would be beautiful. That's not how it works. Um, or it doesn't work that often. Uh, most of the time we expire up here in what we call a tail or tail profit. But also if we start to leak down in here, as this begins to move, I don't know that, you can start to see that this the theoretical line um, here is gonna start to, to bump up. If, and if price drops, uh, just getting close to the trap here, we really start to make some decent money. And now you can see theoretically 200 bucks. So now we're looking at $200 on a $5,000 trade. So now we're at like uh, a, a much better return just if we get into here. So if we drop a little, 
Or if we go up, we're good. If we go up a lot, we're good. If we go down a little, we're good. If we go down quite a bit, we're really good. But if we go down too much, we got a problem. Um, and here's the problem that you have is that your risk here is unlimited uh, for you uh, simply because of that. But so you're going to get a sign. But because we're taking in a dollar and we're going to take in the full $5 from the spread that we put on, to get down here, we're going to take in $6. And that short put that's way down here at 396, well, $6 off of that means we're gonna end up being assigned the 396, but we're gonna get paid $6 to do it. So really our basis is gonna be 390 on that put. Hopefully that makes sense to everybody, which means this is why I love SPY is I'm, I'm pretty happy to get assigned a uh, put on SPY if your account can handle it. Um, I would love to own SPY at 390, considering it's at 433 today. Um, so hopefully that makes sense. That's 43 points below. It's a 10% drop. So the market has to drop 10% for us to, to even have a loss on getting assigned that put. Um, can we drop 10%? Yeah, we can. Uh, can we drop down in here? We could. If we drop down in here, though, we got more problems than getting assigned um, shares a SPY at 390. So this is a really good way to own SPY, in my opinion, if you want to. And SPY is a great asset to own. If you just own SPY and you want to write some calls on it or just own it, fantastic asset to have. So this is the one, one, one trade. But when you look at this, again, the big thing is that was at roughly a $5,000 buying power. And we were taking in on this uh, on this trade and if it sta stays up here we would make one hundred dollars let's take a quick look at this thing on mes i love trading the futures on these things so let's uh let's take a look at mes and this by the way is a really beautiful thing uh, this is all of my mes trades on at once so we're sitting right in the middle look at this big fat giant tent that we're in uh, so we just sit in here and we just make money by just sitting in here anywhere. Uh, we don't have to do a single thing. We can take a nap. In fact, I'm going to the beach tomorrow. So I'm hopping on a plane again and I'm jumping to Florida. Uh, so we'll be in Florida tomorrow. Gabe, we'll be down in your area, actually. Uh, so I'll be in Jupiter at the condo, hanging out on the beach and letting this thing just crank some money out. But that's not why we're here. So let's take a look at doing this one, one, one trade uh, on, uh, on MES. And we're gonna do the same type of thing uh, in here. We're gonna buy roughly the 30 and we're going to go 50 wide uh, on this. And we're gonna try to get $10 um, for this particular trade. I know I've got some other trades on, so. Oops, I don't know what I'm doing. So we make it 250, now let's go up one. All right, so here, here we go again on the same trade on MES. Now my buying power is gonna be funky because I have about a million trades on MES going on. Let's stop showing those so it doesn't get confusing here. So we're gonna spend $10 for this and then we're gonna go down and find something worth 20. There we go. Perfect, right there. And we're gonna sell that one. So using MES now, we're going to sell the 4260 or buy the 4260, sell the 4210, and then sell again at 3910. And that's gonna that's gonna certainly be a, a much bigger difference. Now my buying power is kind of goofed up on this today um, because I have so many other MES trades on. Uh, we could have picked a different expiration, but my buying power on this going to be significantly lower, significantly lower um, than it is on uh, using SPY, simply because it's futures, you have a much higher uh, uh, margin opportunity with span margin. And as long as that VIX stays down there and we don't go to hell in a handbasket, um, then uh, this will turn out to be a pretty good trade. Uh, using great buying power. And the nice thing about this is when we put this particular one on, yes, I know I wouldn't have this problem in one. 
but here's the trade in MES. So right now, uh, you can see now I'm uh, moving to the upside. We've got about a $50 gain and about $300. So it's half the size uh, or half the gains, but the buying power, even though this is a funky little number here is so much lower um, on this. So your percentage returns much, much, much higher. I like doing this in MES, except I like the simplicity of SPY. And I, while I wouldn't mind getting assigned MES down here at 38.50, or you know, actually I'll get assigned here at uh, 39.10, but uh, my basis is gonna be uh, 60 points below that. Uh, this would give me an opportunity. I could own MES. I could roll this out if I, I could roll this put out if I wanted to. Lots of flexibility with the 111. One of the magical things that you can do with this is what if we double the size? So now we're going to double the size of this thing. Uh, and now we're back towards pretty much the same income um, as, as SPY would be since we're doubling the size of this MES trade on still a lot less buying power then I don't know if somebody wants to do it on theirs and let me know what the buying power is on this particular trade. Because again, mine's really affected by the fact that there's so many other MES trades on. Now look at the curve. This curve is beautiful. If we start to drop into this area here and get close to the top of the trap, that curve and curve starts to delay. It starts to really hump up in here and looks really, really nice. If we blow through it quickly, yeah, then we start to get some red. But you know what? We have ways of dealing with this. Um, as well. So here's the MES trade, but what is a great option on both MES and SPY, now SPY it's gonna cost you more, is if I double the number of contracts of what I'm doing, if this thing continues to just heart, you know, hang out somewhere up here in the tail and this put down here drops from 20 bucks roughly to 10 as decay happens, what I'll do is I'll buy that put back. Um, so I'll buy that put back at 10, which will basically um, you know, put me back to even as a trade because I took in $10 credit to put this on. Uh, this put made me money and dropped from 20 to 10. I'm gonna buy it back. And now I have basically a two, two, one on. Uh, and again, this is kind of a funky looking uh, way to, to view it here because it's really not the setup, but uh, once that happens, then I'm only going to be, uh, if it, if we drop hard and fast all of a sudden, now I only have one put here and I'm only going to be assigned on one and not two. Uh, so I have a lot less downside, uh, on that. So I can put the original trade on, do it with two, uh, as my quantity. And then if this long, there's this farther out of the money short put drops in half price wise because we hung out up here. Then I'll simply buy one of those two back, which will reduce the risk on the downside. So there's the one, one, one trade uh, done in MES, uh, which is a, uh, I love the trade. Uh, so reg T uh, on MES 5200 for, for a 10 lot, 5200. So uh, so yeah, on a two lot, you're looking at like a thousand dollars for a two lot, but a ten lot, fifty two hundred. So you could do a lot more contracts with this MES. You put a ten lot on, as Igor was mentioning, for fifty two hundred. It's the same price um, that I'm dealing with with uh, Spy, but yet ten times what I was getting, which would be about a five hundred dollar tail, um, and somewhere in the neighborhood of. Uh, what I think a uh, three thousand dollar trap, uh, so pretty good on that margin. Uh, yeah, twenty nine seventy five. So good, it's good stuff. I love it on MES. It's just I have a lot of MES stuff on, uh, and it gets a little difficult to manage uh, these things. Um, but I do like it, and I don't mind getting assigned on spy. You can close this far one out for half and reduce the margin on it. You can close out in the trap. You can close out up here. You can close out up. Lots of flexibility with this particular piece, but I don't think all the way down here because I really don't fear the market going this far, at least not while Jay Powell's pumping money. All right, so we're getting long in, in my part of the session here. So uh, I'm going to keep going.
hopefully my internet's in good shape. I oh, just got the unstable warning. Uh, so I'm gonna close down um, toss and we'll just stick in tasty works. All right, we're gonna look at the one, two, zero trade, which you've seen uh, me put on as well. We're gonna go back to spy. We're gonna go back to putting on a trade here in spy. Uh, but the one All right, it looks like uh, and Tom's internet did give out and he is now probably going to um, reconnect. Um, stick around if you have time. Um, I think Gabe wanted to share some stuff. So I don't know if um, you wanted to jump in or not, but um, there uh, comes Tom, so. Yeah, sorry about that. There he is. Uh, I'm almost done. So let me, uh, let's knock this one out. Let's see if I can re-screen share. Uh, maybe I'm unstable, internet's unstable, who knows what. Uh, uh, let's see if we can get this one out. So we're going to go out 45 days. If uh, I have a problem, Igor, just speak up and let me know that you can't hear or see what I'm doing. The 120 trade, I'm going to buy a put um, around that 25 delta. Uh, here, so we're going to buy one here, and I'm going to sell two that gives me about a dollar credit. So... Uh, if I was here, we're gonna, we'll move this around. Uh, that was a pretty good, yeah. So if I'm buying one for four, I'm gonna sell two for about 250, which would give me about a dollar, uh, a dollar credit. So this is the plan here is I'm going to buy one put around 25 Delta. I'm going to sell two puts at a lower price at enough money to give me a $1 credit here on SPY. So if I'm buying it for a buck for four bucks, then obviously I need $5 in credit, which would be half of that would be about 250. So I'm somewhere in here, we could do something like this. So this looks right. So I get a dollar 10 credit. Let's take a quick look at how this thing looks. Stupid tasty works, okay. Uh, so here's how this one looks. Similar style to what we just did. So a, a, a fairly similar type of trade. So I'm not saying that you need to do both. You can choose whichever one feels more comfortable for you. Um, but this, it looks like a fly. But what we didn't do was we didn't buy, and Tony from Mexico calls it, that shitty, out, that shitty put. Uh, so why, you know, we didn't buy the shitty put here, excuse my language, if that offends you, it's all good, but we didn't buy the crappy put down here. Uh, so I didn't have to buy the crappy put, which gives me unlimited downside, which you know for some may not be perfect, but I still have the opportunity to not only buy or get assigned uh, down here, somewhere around 390, uh, you know, 389, 390 is where my break even is going to be. Past that, yeah, I'm going to get assigned on these 403s uh, in here as well. But buying power is going to be very similar to the previous trade, uh, a, a little over 5,000 on this trade, still getting about a buck 10 here. If we get into this uh, range in here as well, you can make a little bit more than what that 111 did. But again, the 120, it gives me downside, some downside protection if we drop not terribly uh, to 390. It's about, again, about an eight to 9% market sell off to get here in 45 days. So if we sell off hard, nine, 10%, uh, it'll, uh, it'll put some pressure on us. Uh, down in here, but again, I'm I'm all good buying spy at 390, uh, and then we'll just let that thing run back up to where it was because that's what it does. Uh, how fast it gets there, we don't know. So these are two of the uh, two of the trades that uh, that we've been putting on here lately, and I want to do one more really interesting piece, and then I'm going to shut up for the day. Uh, just taking a look at market still, we're down a whole $11 on the SPX. World's not coming to an end quite yet. Um, down a whole 0.25%. But we're going to look to do um, 
a black swan hedge trade in here. And I have several of these on right now, but I'm gonna talk about a little bit about what the black swan hedge, or I call it the big ass hedge or big ass hedge, whatever you wanna call it. You can go out somewhere between, I'd say 75 to 100 days. And I found the farther I go out, the more difficult this trade is a little bit, but I want to give it a, enough time. So I think 76 days is a really good sweet spot right now. So here's what we're going to do. And this is, this is a black swan hedge. This is if the world ends tomorrow. Uh, but it's a way to put a bunch of trades on that will negate a gigantic sell-off um, if that particular happens. And it's not going to cost me a dime to do it. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to jump into ES here because I like using ES for this. So we're going to look at the E minis. And what I'm going to do is we're going to go all the way out to a $3, uh, a $3 put. Okay, so $3 puts 2,600 bucks. And I'm going to sell three of these. Uh, so I'm going to sell three of these puts right here. Uh, so those three of the 2,600. Now, this is a long way out. I mean, the world is coming to an end if this happens. Um, but you'll see, you'll see the beauty of it in a little bit. So we're going to sell three of these at $3.10. But what we're going to do is we're going to put this on around 76 days. Roughly in 30 days from now, so 30 days from 76 be about the 45, but the 46 here. If we look back at that 2,600 put, okay, that put's going to be selling, or the, you know, if the markets stay up, uh, that put's going to be worth about a dollar five uh, at, at this point. So not even 30 days, I can get this. I'm going to look at the 20. I'm going to look at 50 strikes lower. So we were looking at selling the 2600. I'm going to look at the 2550. And what I want to do is I'm going to buy five of the 2550 puts for a buck 50. Uh, so 46 days is far. 63 days. Let's see where that 2550 put is. Hope this is making sense. Uh, so it's about a buck 85. So it's really going to take uh, somewhere between 20 and 30 days. Between 20 and 30 days, this put will have gone from $3.05 to about a dollar. Well, here it is. Um, yeah, to about a dollar 50. Pretty close. So when, the, when this put, uh, when the, strike, the 50 point farther down strike gets to about a buck 50, I'm going to buy five of those. So I'm doing these in a ratio of three to five. So sell three for about three bucks, which is gonna cost me about $9 and, and some change, or it's gonna net me $9 and change. And then I'm gonna buy five at a buck 50, which is gonna cost me, or a buck 60, buck 70, buck 80, something like that. It's gonna cost me about the same amount. So for free, now I'm going to have five long puts on at that's in that same, but I'm going to do it in the same time period as I did here. Uh, so we're going to wait till this gets all the way, this 2550 here gets down to about a buck 50 and I'm going to buy five of these at a buck 50. Okay. Hopefully you're with me so far and that made uh, some sense. So sell three of these, wait until the 2550 gets to about a buck 50 and I'm going to buy five of those. So, you know, a buck 60, buck 70, something in there, but it's going to be essentially a wash. So what it cost me to put those on, uh, and I've still got roughly probably 60, 50 days to expiration. But what I'm going to do then is when this 2,600 now gets down to about 20 cents, I'm going to take it off. So I'm going to, you know, so once it's down to about 20 cents, I'm going to take it off. And when I take that off, it's going to leave me with five long 2550s at roughly, I don't know, 45, 40 days uh, to expiration. And as soon as I bought these at a buck 50 or whatever, the five of these, I will then go out to 76 days again and sell another five. So every time I buy my longs, I sell another five. 
Then when these kings, you know, then when 50 points lower get to about a buck 50, buck 60, I'll buy five. I'll sell another three out. And then when the, when the shorts get to about 20 cents, I take them off. And what happens is, and in my account, you're going to accumulate somewhere in the neighborhood of 20 to 30 long puts in the ES for free. So if the market all of a sudden decides to just rip down 5, 10, 20%, so who knows what could happen. Um, if that happens, the value of these is going to skyrocket, which is why I don't care about the MES trades or those spy trades we just put on, because these hedges will offset any potential loss. In fact, these hedges will double to triple your account size um, if you get a sell-off like we did in uh, in the COVID uh, February March timeframe, uh, so you can easily double, triple your account by having these on. It's just a patient little trade that you put on. So there's the the Black Swan hedge trade um, that I've been using. Hopefully that makes sense to you. Uh, any questions on any of that? Uh, and if not, Gabe, I know you wanted to run through some of the uh, broken wing butterflies. So I left you about 20 minutes or so to, to go through that. All right. Can you guys hear me? Perfect. All right. Let me share my screen. All right. There you go. Can you see my uh option net explorer screen or yep perfect okay all right so i keep i keep getting the same questions on this um broken wing butterfly and people um people are, are trying to ask me all the time well how do you set how do you set them up how do you where do you decide to uh set the strikes um etc so so this is what i do and it, it's it's funny because i was looking at what tom was sharing as some of the concept is very similar because he's doing this uh ratio spreads on on spy and basically what a broken wing butterfly is is a it's a ratio with you know with a added wing which you use for um for margin purposes right so the wing that you're buying um should be as cheap as possible um but you know like i don't have such a big account that i can do that so i usually do that uh you know try to keep it uh you know try to um look at my risk and manage my risk according to my account right so th this is one of the ones that we did uh with uh income navigator and i put this uh trade i think it was let me see the date uh june june 17 and this was a one day uh to expiration and if you look at the charts the reason that i that i chose those strikes was because i saw that we were um losing the 20 uh, daily moving average on spx and I thought, well, we're probably going to test the 50, right? So if you look at this, um, I chose this strikes. I chose 4190, 4175, and 4155. And I sold this for about, I think it was 55 cents. Um, I think that the trick with this is, so, so you want to look at an an area of support, right? In this case is a put uh, broken wing butterfly. So the support that I chose was 41.75. Um, you ideally you want the width of the the wings between the the center strike and the closer to the money uh, wing to be as wide as possible. Why? Because the goal is that this uh, shorts that you're selling lose value, lose all the value, and then you're left with this longs, right? So the quicker 
this uh, lose value, then the, then you're gonna be left with this long that hopefully, if the underlying keeps going towards, you know, your direction, as long as it doesn't, you know, go past the short strike that that should be your line on the sand. I mean, the, the line on the sand is actually break even to the downside, but ideally you want this to be as close to the middle as possible. Um, then you're good. So let, let me show you just how, what happens when you move the strikes around. Um, if you have, let's say, if you, if you bring the upper wing a little closer to the short uh, strikes, you get more credit initially, but then you have more negative delta, right? And if you even bring it closer, then you have more credit, which is, this is something that Igor did not too long ago. But in this case, I would, if, if I want this structure, I would do it with a different purpose. That would be if I, if I think that, um, you know, if I want to collect the credit and I think I'm, I want, we're, we're going to go up, right? Because you're, you really have a lot of negative delta. So if you're doing this for just one day, you're going to, you know, you're going to get killed. <laughs> it's not going to be pretty. So you want this as wide as possible. Now, the wider you go, the more debit you pay, and then the more negative delta you have, you see now this is balanced. So if you, if you th anticipate a quick move and then, you know, uh, aggressive move, then ideally you want to have either more balanced or, you know, this is, this structure is more on along the lines, like what Anya usually uh, does, right? Um, so I like to keep the debit small, you know, as small as possible. Um, sometimes I do for like zero or for just a few cents. So in case that it doesn't work, I just lose a couple, you know, a few cents. Uh, in this case, I did this structure because I thought the move could be a little faster than anticipated and then at, as time went on uh, let me show you what happened then we started taking off as a you know because you know that move was controlled you know slow so then as as i started as it started moving i started taking some contracts i took a couple off here uh on the same day in the morning, then I took some more off, then I reduced all the risk to the upside. Um, and then I took one more, you know, here we were up nicely, it was 17% on risk, right? I put it for 58 cents, but here I was taking them off for like, uh, let me see, like over a buck, I think. Yeah, like a dollar thirty, a dollar seventy five, two dollars three dollars and then 450 i took the last contract off so this is the next i think overall we did like a thousand bucks on on eight contracts on this but so basically that's the that's the um, that's the 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 basis of how i set up the trade when i look i don't know how to look at the chat let me see does the debit show on in one when moving the strikes around? Uh, yeah, like if you look if you look down here, uh, you can see the cost of the of the trade. Let me go back to the original that I was looking at. Uh, There you go. Um, if you see here, this is the 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 one that I'm uh, changing right now. This the whole the debit for this trade was about two ninety, including commissions. So if you move it around, here you see two twenty eight. That's a credit, right? If you move this up, you can see, you know, nine thirty two debit. Um, you can also move the, the other side, right? But you increase risk to the downside and it also affects your, your, uh, your deltas, right? Um, I hope this is making sense. Let me know if you have any questions, um, regarding where, where to place the, 
the short strikes you i mean you wanna you wanna be looking at the chart and you i i i use i like drawing trend lines use fibs use previous highs high swings low swings moving averages um if you want to do it to the downside like i said you know usually moves to the downside are a little um, more aggressive so you want to in that case you want to make sure that you your deltas are um you know set up properly you don't want to have too much negative delta if if you anticipate a, a, a strong down move right um i mean too too much positive delta like like this you don't you don't want this or this right um you want something more like this right so that you can take advantage of this and start taking off some contracts and and then reduce risk uh, as quickly as possible um you can obviously do this with more exp you know more more days to expiration um and in that case you can do you know wider um uh setups right so let me let me see if i can show you on sorry uh let's see so let's say we want to do something for monday right so we're gonna look at the chart this is where we're at now right so let's say i, I anticipate a move back to the you know to the all-time highs to the four forty four hundred area so the first thing that i would do is that I would look, I'm not saying to do this trade, but this is just to, so you guys understand. So let's say I'm looking at Monday's expiration, right? This is, this is at the edge of the expected move. I don't think by Monday, we're going to go much higher than 4,400. So if I sell the shorts, you know, if I place the short strikes there and I buy the 4,390, this could be done for zero right so if i was going to do this trade i would look to buy as cheaply as i can right a, a cheap uh wing so that i can keep the cost of this trade very low so if you look this here you're going to have initially very um negative deltas but you know this is by monday you're going to be you know this is going to lose value as as long as we don't rally too hard and um and then you're going to be left with the three the uh, 4390s now i don't know if i would i probably wouldn't take this trade but you want to do it when you know when you see spx rallying and all this premium is getting pumped up so that you get you can do it wider you can get a you can get a cheaper I mean, you can do something like that, but then you're going to be uh, paying a, a, a debit, right? Which, you know, it's fine. If you want to risk a couple hundred bucks to possibly make, you know, double that, I think it's a good uh, risk reward. As long, again, as long as we don't rally, you know, past this area, right? 40, 44, 20. And the the what i like about this is that you can structure it's very flexible right you can move it around move the strikes around and you can structure it however you like it controlling the risk on both sides um also if you if you were to do a couple of contracts you can also you know you know this double if you spend little money this double pretty easy right so then you can just take half when it doubles and then you reduce all the risk or do four and reduce you know sell three um when they when you can reduce risk i hope it makes sense uh let me see question so you would it be fair to say that your strategy with butterflies is less to guess right Less to guess right by closing as close to the middle on expiration as possible and more setting them up with more contracts so you can skim profit as it moves in your direction. Right. Right. So I want to be taking advantage of the shorts uh, losing their value quicker than the longs. So then I can just skim and, and you know, cl 
close a contract at a time and then uh you know risk very little and um you know if it goes against me you know if it, if it doesn't work out in the direction that i think i don't lose uh too much money the the, the problem has been for me is when I underestimate how quickly it can move up, right? And it's been happening a lot. Like, you know, lately we've been having these moves, you know, way stronger than the expected move. Um, so do you prefer to use technical to determine strikes over expected move? I use both. Um, I look at FIBs, I look at um, trend lines, I look at... Um, the expected move, but I think that, you know, the, the trick is to, you know, to manage it properly, right? Like you, if you see, if you pick your strikes and then like immediately you start getting a huge move and, and you, you're like, oh man, this, I think this is going to get killed. You know, there's nothing wrong with just taking it off and starting a new one. Um, and I, I've had it before where I'm, I'm, I'm like, no, I think it's going to hold, but, you know, and, and I didn't take it. I didn't, I didn't take it out when I thought, you know, it was, I was going to get run over and then I suffer the consequences. So I think there's nothing wrong with changing your mind. And, and, you know, if you see that something is not going the way you want it or the way you thought, just take it off and, and start a new one. And, you know, the loss that you're going to take, at the beginning is usually not going to be uh, as big a, as if you wake up, you know, the next day and this thing got up 50 points. Any other questions? Is it clear? It's good stuff. All right. Excellent. Uh, all right, perfect, guys. And uh, timing is good. We're right at the top of the hour. So uh, lots of good stuff, Gabe. That was awesome. Uh, if you guys aren't using one, get it. Uh, don't be like me using that TastyWorks Analyze thing and trying to uh, show you what something looks like. So, <laughs> so here's a good ad advertisement for one. Um, I just think it's a, a good uh, I love it. tool. So yep, one's awesome. Get it. And uh, excellent. All right, so uh, we'll wrap it up for today. Appreciate everybody jumping in. Hopefully you got something out of it. So we covered a lot of different things today and uh, we will see everybody in Slack. Enjoy a fantastic Friday and great rest of your weekend. Take care, everybody.